Institute here on KAZ Radio. So excited to be back with you and to have this wonderful time in the teaching of the Word of God. Thank God for the students who are studying with me the New Testament survey. And we come today to the Gospel according to St. John. We had looked at the Gospel of Mark and we saw that Mark writes to the Jews, depicting Jesus Christ as the King of the Jews, as the Messiah. We looked in Mark and we saw that Mark writes to the Romans and we see no genealogy in Mark for the Romans were not concerned about who your father is. They want to know if you're a servant. We saw in the book of Luke, Luke writes to the Gentiles depicting Jesus as the perfect man, Jesus the God man. And now we come to the Gospel of John. John writes universally to Christians and he talks about the fact that Jesus is the Christ. In every chapter we see Jesus doing that which only he can do and that is miracles, doing the works of God. Here in St. John in chapter 1, the classic verse as we begin this chapter, the text says, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Here we see that the Word refers to the person of Jesus, that Jesus and the Word are one, are the same. So as we come to the Bible, as we study the Bible and read the Bible, what do we have here? We actually have the mind of God, the will of God, the plan of God, and it is the best thing going. We have here the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God, and we hope that you will take it serious. We hope that you will spend time with God and His Word on a daily basis, and your life will be made the better as we impart still on a new year. We say to you what we've said before, that if you want this year to be a different year, a better year, you have to do something different than you've done on last year. If I do what I've always done, I will get the same kind of result. But if I want a new result, that means I have to do something new or something different. And we advocate that you will embrace and pick up and listen to and meditate upon and memorize and read and study the Word of God. And as you do that, know that you're studying the person of Jesus Christ. Know that you're studying the mind of God. We see something further in chapter 1. In verse 2 it says, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, we see that Jesus is the creator of all things. Verse 3, all things were created by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Here also in this chapter, we see the forerunner is mentioned, the forerunner, a man named John the Baptist. Here in verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might be saved. John the Baptist, not the Savior, but he was a preacher, if you will. And he came to foretell that Jesus was coming, just like all of the prophets in the Old Testament. They too would foretell the coming Christ. Here in verse 12, it talks about how to receive him. Uh, in verse 12, it says, But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And how important that is. To receive the Lord Jesus Christ, understand that we're not here to stay. Understand in just a little while God is going to call. Know that life is short. James says life is a vapor that appear but a little while. One day God is, God is going to call. Ready or not, we're going. And so may we receive the Lord Jesus Christ so that God, when he calls us, he will see that we are his son, his daughter, that we are children of God and not people who are eternally lost. And so we thank God for Jesus and all that he has done for us. In chapter 2, he, we see Jesus' first miracle that he would perform uh, in his earthly ministry. His earthly ministry had spanned it for three years. He lived in the likeness of sinful flesh for 33 years. We have no record of his life after the age of 12. And we see him as he would begin his ministry at the age of 30. But we see him in John and chapter 2. He performed his first ministry. He turns the water into wine. And as we look at this, we see that he's at a wedding. 
It is believed that he is perhaps at the wedding of one of his half uh, sisters. We know that Mary and, and, and Joseph would have more children after the, the birth of Jesus. We know that based on uh, several scriptures. In fact, the scriptures tell us the names of his brothers, not his sisters. And the mother of Jesus came to him and said that we have no wine. And Jesus, he would work the miracle. But also we see that this is a story on prayer. What a beautiful story it is. Note St. John chapter 2 and verse 1. And the Bible says this. And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. It is believed that uh, someone in the family, the immediate family, was getting married. Verse 3, And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. This also is a lesson on prayer. Note she made her request known. That's what prayer is. We speak to God. Note she was talking not to a man, and she knew exactly who she, Jesus was, is, and that is God. And she made her request. Note also the request was uh, specific. Also note that the request was uh, biblical. It was, she was not asking for something that was ungodly, something that was immoral. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the drinking of wine. Uh, I don't drink and really never did. But there's nothing wrong with the drinking of wine. Uh, what is wrong is getting drunk. Here, they were at a celebration, and also we understand in Bible times, there was a problem with the uh, purification of water. And so to drink wine with your meal was on the norm. And they had ran out, and the mother came and made her request known. And then verse 4, Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. A second principle as it relates to prayer. There are times when God will answer our prayer as we are obedient to him. Sometimes we're praying for the salvation of an unsaved loved one, an unsaved friend. God says, I'm able to answer. Are you able to be a witness? Are you able to witness? Sometimes we pray for wisdom. Lord, would you give me wisdom? God says, I like that kind of prayer in James chapter 1 and verse 5. He says, I will not dishonor a prayer prayed asking for wisdom, and I will generously bless. God says now, but are you willing to study? Are you willing to go get it? Are you willing to dig into the word of God? And so the mother said, whatever he says, do it. Many of our answer to prayers, God, he used us in the answering thereof. He may not always send the angel to work the miracle. He says, I will give you the job. You go now and seek. You go now and knock. You go now and pray. And I will answer. As you seek, you will find the text says what a great truth that is. And so they were obedient, and we see the miracle that would take place. In John chapter 3, we have the visit of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. Later on, he would become a secret disciple of Jesus. He would become a secret follower. There are too many today who are following Jesus, but they're following him secretly. They're ashamed of the Lord. Jesus is no one to be ashamed of. Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, in him I live and move and have my being. May we announce to the world that we're saved, and may our life also reflect the fact that we know the man. And we see something. We see the dialogue that began here in John and chapter 3, the text says, there was a man of the Pharisees. That meant that he knew the Bible. That meant he was a student of the scriptures. When we speak of the word scriptures, primarily we're referring to the Old Testament. We're referring to Genesis through the book of Malachi. He, they knew the Old Testament and they were religious. They were not right with God. Think about it. Hear that. Matthew chapter 23, Jesus, he referred to the Pharisees and he said to them several times throughout that chapter, woe unto you, and he called them hypocrites. Although they looked the part, they did not act the part. They did not live 
the part. It was just ritualism. They prayed the long and lofty prayers to be heard of men. They gave their arms and blew the trumpets so that they would appear to be pious. And yet God knew that they were clouds without rain. God knew that they were empty, that they were vain, that they were shallow, and that they were dead. And here we find one of the rulers. He took note of Jesus, and he said that this man is God, not so much because of what he said, but because of what he has done. Listen, I want you to know that words are important, yes, but understand that it is your life that will define you. Understand that it is your deeds that will define you, that will reveal to mankind exactly who you are. Not so much the pretty words, not so much the poetry, not so much the silver tongue, but the songwriter wrote, may the work I do speak for me. At the funeral, the person who has passed on, his life has already preached his eulogy. And how true. And so Nicodemus had noted the person of Jesus, had noted his life, noted, yes, they heard his words and they said, no one has spoken as this man. He speaketh as one who has authority. Not only does he have authority, but he holds the deed. He is the owner of all there is. And so we find him now, the text says, as we listen to the witness of this rabbi in verse 2, St. John chapter 3, the same came to Jesus by night, saying unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He says, we're not guessing on this. We may deny it, but we know that you're unique. We know that you're peculiar. We know that you are from God and that you are God. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. Why do you know? How do you know? For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except man, except God. Be with him. What miracles? He rose the dead. He opened up the eyes of a man born blind. He healed all manner of diseases. He fed the multitudes with the little, but in the hands of God it was more than enough. He did that which only God can do. He told a life, her, he told a woman her entire life. And we see what Jesus said behind the compliment to this person who was a phony, to this person who was a charlatan, to this person who was religious but didn't know God. He received a compliment from him, but he didn't waste time. And may we not waste time to get to the issue at hand. And that issue is that your soul is eternally lost. And don't play with this thing. Come to Jesus while you have time. Note the text, here we are in verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, note what he didn't say. He didn't say, well, thank you for the compliment. Perhaps we think that is what's more customary to say after such a lofty and true compliment. No, he got right to the business of hand, at hand. And what is the business? Listen, you need to know God. You need to know God. Not just read the Bible. Not just pray a vain prayer. Not just attend church. Not just preach. Not just teach. The question is, are you born again? There are people who are going to hell straight from the pew of the church. There are pastors who are going to hell straight from the pulpit of the church. There are choir members who are going to hell straight from the choir stand of the church, straight from the pew. Ushers going to hell straight from standing at the door as an usher. The question is not where your church membership is. The question, who is the owner of your soul? So he says here in verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot even see 
the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Verse 5, Jesus answering, Verily, verily, or really and truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, except he has been washed from the water of the word of God. Ephesians and chapter 5, around verse 26. St. John chapter 15 and verse 3. I am clean through the word of God. I can do nothing without Jesus. Men and women, boys and girls are saved because of hearing the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. There will be no salvation if there's no word. And that's why I'm so directly, vehemently opposed to churches that do not teach the Bible. And in some places, the church has become a social club, has become a fashion show, has become that which the world come to and display their talents and their immorality and their fine clothing. The church is the house of prayer. It is the house of the living God. It is the place where sinners come to hear how to become saved. It is the place where saints come and hear how to become stronger in God. There must be the word. Listen, we can have worship without music, but we can't have church without God's word. It is not an entertainment hall. It is a place of worship. It is a place to hear the inerrant, inspired, infallible word of God. And that's what is needed. May we come back to the Bible in the preaching and the teaching. May we come back to the Bible in the singing. May the lyrics be that which is biblical, that which is divine. Why? Because the assignment is to win the loss because people need the Lord. The masses are going to hell, but through Jesus Christ, through the preached word, the Spirit of God is able to take the word of God and do the convicting and the converting of the soul. What people need to hear is none other but the truth of God's word, not preaching that is for entertaining, not preaching that is for making people feel good, but preaching that is designed to reach the mind and liberate the soul and the life. That's what it's about. That's what it is about. And so we find Jesus said in St. John chapter 3 and verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, except the word of God is reached in his mind, in his heart, and receive Jesus. The text says, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, If I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And at that moment, God in the person of the Holy Spirit indwells the believer, and we become children of God. No longer does God call us condemned. No longer does he call us unrighteous. No longer does he call us aliens and filthy and enemies of God, but instead he calls us children of God, sons of God, daughters of God, saints even, the redeemed. Yes, why? Because of hearing the word of God and accepting the gift that God has given in the person of Jesus Christ. If you have church but don't have Jesus, you're going to hell. I want you to hear that. I want you to know that. But you don't have to. And God doesn't sin you. You sin yourself by rejecting God's gift. Well, what a great book this is here. Why do people reject the Lord? Note further down in St. John and chapter 3 as we pick up in verse 16, the classic verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 tell us that God sent not his son 
into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And then in verse 18, further down, we discern why people are lost, why they do not come to God. One of the reasons is because their heart is dark, their evil is great, and they love their immorality. They love the darkness, love walking with the devil, and will not come to God lest their deeds would be reproved, the text says. We thank God for this magnificent word. We thank God for the Bible. Thank God for allowing us to live in America or other parts of the world where there is liberty to read the word of God, to study the word of God, to pray to a holy God. May we not take it for granted. It is free to us now. There will come a day when it will no longer be free. And in some parts of the world, the church is underground. They're living in fear. Today, we don't worry about someone barging in and throwing us in the dungeon and beating us and whipping us. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for redemption. We thank God for the gospel of John. I want to encourage you to read all the way through and spend time with the Lord and see and learn about the person of our God. What a great God, and he do great things. No secret what God can do. He specialized. If I would only come to him, he will be blessed. We will be blessed because of it. The Lord bless you. Thank you.